I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of SaltwaterAquarium.com. Saltwater aquariums are an extremely rewarding and enjoyable hobby until something goes wrong with your tank. And if you've been around the saltwater aquarium hobby long enough, you've got a story or two about something going on with your aquarium. Now, hopefully those stories don't involve an all-on aquarium disaster as tank automation can help you avoid or at least lessen the blow from something going wrong with your tank. A common aquarium disaster is an RODI unit overfilling an RODI holding vat. Now, if you catch the overflow early on, you can contain the spill, but usually these overflows happen at night or when you're not around, so relying on luck to have you nearby is a really bad strategy. Here's how to use tank automation to prevent your RODI unit from overfilling your RODI holding vat. First, use a smart RODI unit. Some RODI units like the Spectrograph High Performance line include electronic float switches that sense water levels in your RODI holding vat. Depending on water level in the vat, the RODI unit is turned on or off accordingly. All this happens automatically with zero input from you. If you don't have a smart RODI unit, then here are some ways to help your RODI unit prevent a flood. The simplest and most cost-effective way to prevent an overflow is to use an RODI shutoff valve. These shut off the flow of water from your RODI unit automatically once the water in the vat causes the valve to float. Your RODI unit may need a shutoff solenoid to have the shutoff valve be fully functional. The easiest way to know if your RODI unit is ready for a shutoff valve is to see if it has a shutoff solenoid installed, which looks like this. If you've got the box, you've got what you need to add in the shutoff valve. Pro tip, if you do nothing else to automate your RODI unit, at least install a shutoff valve. Taking automation to the next level, an electronic shutoff switch that senses water level in the vat gives you redundancy to your mechanical float valve. When the water level reaches the eye, incoming water to your RODI unit is shut off. The Floor Guardian gets this done for $69.99. If you've got a Neptune Systems Apex, then adding an optical sensor at the top of your RODI vat, as well as a water on floor sensor and a shutoff solenoid, gives you the ultimate control of your RODI unit. When water in your RODI vat touches a high water optical sensor, program the apex to kill the water to your RODI unit via the shutoff solenoid. If the vat overflows, then the water on floor sensor will be tripped, which can be programmed to shut off the water going to the RODI unit as well. Number two on my list of aquarium disasters that you can prevent with tank automation is heater failures. Heaters usually fail in one of three ways. They don't turn on and your tank is too cold, they stay on and your tank overheats, or they catastrophically fail and the insides of the heater get exposed to your tank. The heater failing to turn off is easy as prevented with a temperature controller. There are several on the market, and unless the heater is over 1000 watts, I use a JBJ True Temperature Controller. Easy to deploy, and they come from a company with a good reputation. Note that none of these temperature controllers will notify you if the temperature is out of range. They just turn on or off the heating device. If you do have a tank controller, by all means, use your tank controller to monitor your tank's temperature and turn on or off your heater as needed. Adding in a layer of redundancy with a temperature controller plugged into your tank controller is a good idea too. Pro tip, set up the alerts on your controller. I've seen so many controllers where the owner hasn't set up alerts, so they're not gonna get notification if something goes wrong in their tanks. The sting of an aquarium disaster is bad enough, and it's only made worse if you know you could have gotten an alert and you could have done something if you had only known. The other way heaters fail is they break and their internal parts are exposed to your tank. The internals of heaters can include metals like copper and aluminum that don't play well with saltwater aquariums. When one of my heaters catastrophically failed and dumped metals into my tank, I sent off a water sample for analysis, and here's what I found. The Triton results showed an elevated level of aluminum and surprisingly, no copper. I did a large water change since I had the water on hand like I talked about in the mixing station series. Since I was prepared, my tank suffered zero livestock losses. Besides being lucky enough to be near your tank when the heater catastrophically fails, you're not gonna know that your heater has catastrophically failed unless it causes a power surge which trips the circuit breaker or your tank controller sees a power spike and sends you an alert. On the Neptune Systems Apex, you can configure it to send you an alert if the power going through the outlet exceeds a user-defined threshold. To set up that threshold, use a power usage task in Apex Fusion. First, find the task tile that looks like this. Then scroll down to Power Usage Alarm and select it. Then select the outlet you want to monitor, and the Apex looks at historical power data to set up the upper and lower limits. Hit Next, then hit Send, and you're all done. Of course, make sure your email and text alerts are set up as well so you get notified if something is wrong. As your reef tank matures and it gets full of growing coral, 
you're going to need to supplement with alkalinity, calcium, and potentially magnesium. Now you're going to do that with dosing pumps or a calcium reactor, and both of these devices have the potential to over or under supplement your tank. Here's how to use tank automation to prevent that from happening. First, use a smaller dosing container for your dosing pumps. This limits the amount of elements that can be added to your tank, as once the dosing container is empty, no more elements are added to your tank. Second, monitoring the least alkalinity and ideally calcium levels in your tank will catch your runaway dosing pump or calcium reactor. Monitoring can be done with an automatic tank tester like the Focustronic Alcatronic or the Neptune Systems Apex Trident, to name a few. Ideally, any element being dosed into my tank would be monitored or controlled. This is regardless of how small the effects of that element may have in my tank. If something is going into my tank, I want to monitor it. Even an issue that doesn't take down your tank can still cause you major headaches on your system. And an overflowing skimmer can do just that. See, when your skimmer overflows, it's going to spatter salty, smelly, skimming muck all over your equipment and potentially all over inside of your stand. What makes it worse? You're not going to find that salty, smelly, skimming muck until it's dried and caked all over everything. That's going to make for a major headache to clean. A float switch in a skimmer cup is one way to prevent such a disaster. These can be a pain to work with, as you have to remove and reattach the wires to the float valve whenever you want to clean the skimmer cup. The easier solution is to use an optical sensor like the Smart Skimmer Security Sensor from Auto Aqua. When you want to clean your skimmer's cup, remove the magnetically coupled pieces of the sensor's eye and set them aside. Once the skimmer cup is clean, couple up the two pieces of the eye and you're good to go. I've used this unit on my tank now for months and I really like it. All the aquarium disasters that I've talked about assume one thing, the power to your aquarium stays on. But what happens if the power outage is the problem? A battery backup is the easiest solution to an extended power outage. Ecotech Marine makes a nice self-contained unit that will power their Vortex and Vector pumps. The battery backup will power a Vortex for days, and if you want to power a Vector with the Ecotech battery backup, I recommend two battery backup units. Computer-based battery backups can work as well if you don't want a proprietary solution. The bigger the battery, the better, so get the biggest one that you can afford or have space for. And yes, generators are even better, and whole house generators are best. I recommend at least a small generator to power the essentials on your tank. Heater, return pump, and power heads. At the very least, have your battery backup plugged into a power head in your tank. The power head will remove water, which will encourage gas exchange at the surface of your tank. That means more dissolved oxygen in your tank, which will buy you time for keeping your inhabitants alive. You'll be surprised how much time the simple setup will buy you and the life in your tank. I hope you never have to deal with an aquarium disaster, especially considering how easy it is to add tank automation to prevent or massively reduce the effect of a disaster on your tank. For as much time, money, or both that you have invested into your system, a little bit of prevention goes a long way. Trust me, you'll thank me for it when the time comes. And if you never have to use it, you've got peace of mind. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwaterquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode. What's up, kids?